What's happening guys? It's Shane here and today I have a very exciting video for you. We are going to be going over the top nine health degrees. And the thing about health degrees is they have more demand than any other type of degree out there. So going into health is likely going to lead to a very stable career. They're also great for people who aren't very good at math. That's one question I get all the time on this channel. And there's just a lot of other positives here. So for instance, with health degrees, you've got great options at pretty much every level, whether you want to do school for like, you know, a few years, four years, like a bachelor's degree, six years, like a master's degree, or eight plus years, like a doctoral degree. There are great options for you at pretty much every other level. And that's not necessarily the case with other types of degrees. But with that being said, it also makes it very difficult to compare health degrees to themselves for one, and also to other types of degrees. Comparing like a master's degree to an associate degree is almost like comparing apples to oranges so really it kind of just comes down to your own personal preference for me my own personal preference I would rather not uh, go into a degree like medical doctor for instance where you know you're gonna have to go to school for eight years and then you're gonna do a residency that's three to seven years and so chances are by the time you get to a net worth of zero you've paid off of all of your student loans you're probably gonna be in your late 30s after that you're gonna be absolutely making bank and killing it. But me personally, that's not the type of lifestyle I want to live. I'd rather be able to get a job, you know, right off the bat in my early 20s and then be able to enjoy my youth. But again, that's just personal preference. It's going to be different for everyone. But with that being said, we are going to jump into it right after you gently tap the like button, hit the subscribe button and ring the notification bell to number nine on the list, which is going to be dentist. All right. So dentists obviously make fantastic money. This is a doctoral level degree. It's going to take about eight years of schooling. And then a lot of the time you will start off working for someone else as a dentist. And then eventually the go-to move here is probably to open your own practice. Unfortunately, it is going to cost a lot of money for you to open your own practice. You're going to have to go even deeper into debt. And that's why along with a student loan debt, of course, dentists don't even hit a net worth of zero a lot of the time until they're in their late thirties. But once you get past that point, you are going to be absolutely raking it in. So this one is very viable, especially if you're someone who is very, you know, long term thinking, and you're willing to, you know, put in all of those years of being in a negative net worth to finally be able to pay all of it off. Next on the list, number seven is going to be medical doctor. And this is either MD or DO. And the great thing about health careers and health degrees is, you know, if you get a degree in nursing, for instance, you're going to become a nurse. It's very cut and dry, straightforward. Whereas there's a lot of degrees out there where you get a degree in this and then you end up doing something completely different. So it's definitely not as cut and dry and you really have to plan ahead. Now with medical doctor, everybody knows Knows that they make fantastic money. However, there is a huge upfront cost. First of all, it's very difficult to get into medical school. You have to be an absolute killer in undergrad. The pre-med track is extremely competitive. You're going to have to do lots of extracurriculars, get really good grades. You have to basically just be a fantastic student in order to even get into medical school. I have personally seen very smart people fail to get into medical school four years in a row. Yes, that means they graduated with their bachelor degree, they failed that year, the next year, the next year after that, and then another time. And these were very smart, very capable people. So do not underestimate how difficult it is to get into medical school. It's hard. Then when you finally get in, medical school itself is incredibly difficult. You are probably going to be studying like 60 hours a week at least. And then on top of that, you're likely going to be getting work experience as well. Then when you get out of medical school, which is going to be one of the hardest things you've ever done, you go into residency where they routinely work 80 hour weeks. Now residency is going to last somewhere between three to seven years. Usually after you're done with residency, a lot of the time you're going to have an option to do a fellowship and the fellowships are also very difficult. You're going to be working long hours. When you finally graduate and become a doctor, you're probably going to be working around 60 hour weeks. Now, of course, this is going to be different depending on the specialty you go in and your own personal choices, but it's not going to be easy either way. This is why I always say that there is a certain type of person that is a good fit to become a medical doctor. This is a type of person who has a, you know, type A personality and you are just a go-getter. Because even when you do become a medical doctor, you're working like 60 hours a week, it's pretty much an obligation for you to stay up to date on the newest 
medical updates. And that way you can give your patients the best possible care. So you are going to be a lifelong learner studying outside of medical school and residency. But if you are the type of person who fits this mold, if you are a type A personality, you don't mind working at least 60 hours a week all the time, basically for the rest of your career, then medical doctor can be a fantastic career for you. But if you're more like me and you wanna have a good work-life balance, maybe you should consider some of the other ones on this list. Next on the list is going to be physical therapy. And this is where you're basically going to help people recover from injuries so that they can live a more normal life. Now, again, guys, in this video, I'm not really gonna go over the statistics because I've gone over that in a ton of detail in other videos. So you can check out my other videos if you want to see those things. But one thing that really stands out about physical therapy is how high the job satisfaction is. So this has one of the highest job satisfaction satisfaction scores out of any career in the entire world. And I think one of the main reasons for that is because, you know, in a lot of different types of medical careers, you do help people, it's just you don't get to see the fruits of your labors, right? So you might give someone a recommendation, but you don't get to see the outcome of that recommendation. You kind of just have to speculate on what ended up happening. With physical therapy, you see the person right after they got injured and you work with them all the way through to the point where they pretty much can live a normal life. So it's extremely rewarding. That's my theory for why physical therapy has such high job satisfaction. In terms of pay, it's pretty good good as well. Uh, a lot of the time you're going to be getting a master's level degree. Some people say it's moving more towards being a doctoral level degree, but the pay is pretty good here. Not amazing, but uh, there's a ridiculous amount of demand. Of course, physical therapy is not going away. It's probably going to get even bigger in the future. So this is a fantastic one for you to consider. Next on the list is going to be diagnostic medical sonographer. Now sonography is an amazing technology. It basically uses sound to produce a 2D or a 3D the image so that you can basically see through things using sound. Now there's tons of different uses for this. One of the most common ones, of course, is to be able to see uh, babies while they're still inside of the womb. Now, one thing that's amazing about getting into sonography is you can actually just get into it with a few years of study. And this changes from state to state. Uh, different states are gonna have different requirements, but usually it's just a few years. So it's less than a bachelor level degree, and you can get into a career where you're making pretty good money. It's also very rewarding has pretty high job satisfaction and on top of that there is a ton of demand. One downside to this one is it is going to kind of pigeonhole you into that career a little bit. There's not too much room for kind of moving up or even laterally to different types of careers. It's not like nurse for instance where there's just so many different options out there if you don't happen to like the current job that you're in. Now the next one on the list is actually very similar. It only takes a few years to get into and that is number six dental hygienist. You can make really, really good money as a dental hygienist and it only takes a few years to get into. We're talking six figures. Now I will say kind of as an asterisk here, as a dental hygienist, you really need to be kind of like an extroverted, outgoing type of person. Many people hate going to the dentist and they hate even more having other people, you know, put their hands in your mouth and stuff. And so you really need to be talented at making people feel comfortable. That's just my opinion on this one though. Um, next one on the list is also very similar, only takes a few years for you to get into and that is radiation therapist. Out of all of the ones that only take a few years to get into, radiation therapist actually pays the most. And this is where you're going to be helping uh, administer radiation therapy to patients who have cancer for instance. It can be used for other things as well. So yeah, pretty tough one to get into. You have to have thick skin but it's extremely rewarding being able to help people out uh, that are in kind of a bad situation. Tons of demand for this one. I think it has kind of the same weakness as the other two to, which is there's not much room for flexibility. So for, for whatever reason you don't like the career, it's gonna to be tough for you to transition. But the next one on the list is fantastic when it comes to flexibility, just because of the fact that there is literally millions of nurses in the United States. And so for that reason, there is pretty much unlimited different types of jobs and careers that you can go into. Literally hundreds of different types of nurses out there, right? And that's what it is. It is nursing at number three. Now, not only is there a bunch of different types 
types of nurses, but there's nursing degrees at just about every level. So you've got basically like a two year nursing degree. And again, there's some programs out there where you can get it done in like one year or less. Then you've got kind of the four year nursing degree, like a six years master level nursing degree, and then an eight year DNP doctoral level nursing degree as well. So yeah, nursing is fantastic. You can move horizontally, you can move vertically. Uh, the time that I've spent in healthcare, I have seen nurses that are like directors of hospitals and up, you know, on high levels uh, up in hospitals. So, you know, I mean, nobody knows hospitals better than nurses except maybe doctors, but that's arguable. And so it makes total sense that nurses a lot of the time end up in these director roles. So yeah, nursing is fantastic, super flexible. You can get like the two year degree, work for a few years and then decide, hey, I think I'm ready to go back to school, get the four year degree, work for a few more years. I'm ready to go back to school, get your master's work for a few more years. I'm ready to go back to school, get that DNP, and then just go on from there. Really, really great option. Pretty much scores well in every single category. The next one on the list is going to be what was formerly known as physician assistant, now known as physician associate. And this is basically a master's level degree where you are able to prescribe and diagnose under the supervision of a doctor. Now the term supervision is kind of used used lightly here because a lot of the time the doctor is not actually going to be watching you. They just allow you to diagnose in certain cases. They might take on some of the more complicated cases, but depending on how much they trust you, they're going to let you subscribe and diagnose in a lot of other situations. But with that being said, this one is just fantastic in my opinion. Uh, really high pay, tons of opportunity. It's one of the fastest going careers out there. Also very easy for you to switch specialties. So for instance, maybe you wanted to be a physician associate it that uh, works in surgery you get tired of that and you decide you know what I really like dermatology so you switch over to dermatology very easy to do that that's something that would not be an option for you if you were a medical doctor or at least it would be pretty much impossible for you to do very difficult but quite easy to do if you are a physician associate really good one here guys I do hear a lot of people talking about how they think it's going to become saturated because so many people are opening schools and that is a possibility it kind of depends on how smart they are about it if they just let people open schools willy-nilly um, and not realize that obviously school is a business that's something I talk about on this channel at the end of the day these universities are businesses and if you just let them open schools left and right they are going to do that and then it's going to become saturated so as long as they're smart about how they do it and they keep standards up at a really high level this is going to be a fantastic career for a very very long time next on the list is going to be nurse practitioner and these two are pretty much tied I'd um, I give the slight edge to nurse practitioner, but honestly, next week I could change my mind. Uh, nurse practitioner is basically a master's level nursing degree, like I talked about before. Just like physician associate or physician assistant, you can prescribe and diagnose, but you don't have to be under the supervision of a doctor. You make fantastic money with this one. The job growth is absolutely ridiculous. Job satisfaction tends to be really good as well. Like many of the careers on this list, it's extremely meaningful. You're really going to be helping people out on a day-to-day -day basis. Really good one, guys. Hard to go wrong with this one. So much flexibility. Relatively easy for you to switch specialties if you compare it to like medical doctor, for instance. Just a really solid option all around. All the statistics are great. But yeah, guys, if you want more information on the best college degrees to get, check out my College Degree 101 course down in the description below. It is changing lives. This is the course I wish I had when I first started college. Even if you're in high school, this is going to help you out tremendously. Check it out down in the description below. And uh, also check out my other videos right here. I made them just for you. Go ahead, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, ring the notification bell, and comment down below any thoughts, comments, criticisms, etc. that you have on the video.